गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर स्वप्निल पीडियाट्रिक सर्जरी एस आर फ्रॉम पी जी आई चंडीगढ़ टूडे वील बी डिस्कसिंग अ पार्ट टू अबाउट मेल ए आर एम मैनेजमेंट सल्डर इन प्रीवियस पार्ट वन वी डिस्कस रिगार्डिंग द टाइप्स क्लासिफिकेशन एंड एसोसिएट हॉमलीज ऑफ ए आर एम इन टूडे पार्ट टू वंस वी हैव इवेल्यूट असेस द पेशेंट इवेल्यूएटेड इट एंड सी टी पी लैज बिन डन पेशेंट्स विद लो ए आर एम और पेरिनियल फिस्टूला आर मैनेज विद इनोप्लास्टी वेर एज पेशेंट्स विथ रेक्टल गैस बिलो द कॉकिक्स और पी सी लाइन और विद नो असोशियल डिफेक्ट्स एंड नॉट सिक और इल कैन बी ट्रीटेड विद द प्राइमरी पी एस आर पी विदाउट कोलास्टोमी और विद कोलास्टोमी वेर एज पेशेंट्स विद द रेक्टल गैस अबो द कॉकिक्स अबो पी सी लाइन विद असोशियल डिफेक्ट्स एबनॉर्मल सैक्रम फ्लैट बॉटम कैन बी ट्रीटेड विद द कन्वेंशनल थ्री स्टेज प्रोसीजर दैट इज कोलास्टोमी पी एस ए आर पी एंड कोलास्टोमी क्लोजर सर्जिकल मैनेजमेंट ऑफ मेल ए आर एम रिवॉल्व अराउंड थ्री सर्जरीज ए इनिशियल ट्रीटमेंट विद कोलास्टोमी एंड अ डेफिनेटिव प्रोसीजर विद एदर एनोप्लास्टी और पी एस सी आर पी नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ मेल ए आर एम्स कैन बी ट्रीटेड विद ओनली दिस थ्री प्रोसीजर्स हाई डिवाइडेड सिग्मोइड कोलास्टोमी इज द आइडियल कोलास्टोमी फॉर मैनेजमेंट ऑफ मेल ए आर एम पेशेंट्स हियर यू कैन हियर यू कैन मेक द स्टोमा एट द डिसेंडिंग कोलॉन एट द एंड ऑफ द डिसेंडिंग कोलॉन द प्रोक्सिमल पार्ट ऑफ द सिग्मोइड कोलॉन एंड इवन द डिजिटल स्टोमा फॉर द पुल थ्रू इज क्वाइट एडिक्वेट दीज पेशेंट्स हैव एडवांटेजेस विद अ बाउल डी कॉम्प्रेशन एज वेल एज अ प्रोटेक्शन फॉर द फाइनल रिपेयर इट फैसिलिटेट्स द डिजिटल कोलास्टोग्राम एंड रिलेटिवली विद इज अ वेरी स्मॉल सेगमेंट ऑफ अ डी फंक्शनल डिजिटल कोलॉन एंड हेंस लेस चांस ऑफ माइक्रो कोलॉन हेंस दिस इज अ डिसएडवांटेज इफ यू मेक अ ट्रांसफर्स कोलॉन फॉर दीज पेशेंट्स and also it has it can be done for easy pull through whereas it becomes difficult when you make a colostomy at the mid part or the distal part of the sigmoid because a larger part of the sigmoid colon the mobile part of the sigmoid colon remains there is more chance of prolapse as well as you can see the distal stump is very less so preparing a pull through will be difficult in the next the, the same can be seen in the distal colostogram x ray whereas making a loop stoma is quite bit easier than the sdsc but the passage of stools from the proximal stoma to the distal stoma can lead to a uh, recurrent urinary tract infections if there is a fistula also the distal rectal pouch gets in dilated enough with the fecal impaction and hence there can be a irreversible hypomotility disorder once we uh, sdsc is done we prefer uh, pre uh, pressure augmented distal colostogram after 6 weeks the colostogram gives us an idea about the rectal pouch as well as when the dye is injected with the pressure to the distal pouch uh, to the distal mucous fistula here we can see the fistula the level of the fistula where it is exactly here uh, in this picture in this x-ray it is showing the bulbar fistula here we can make out there is a space for dissection in between the rectal pouch as well as the urethra so this gives an clear cut picture whereas uh, uh, the second x ray which shows the prostatic or recto bladder neck fistula here the plane of dissection is very narrow as well as it shows the rectal pouch is quite high enough the dissection requires to be high when you are doing through lower part but some centers use and even follow the uh, ct scan he ct scan can demonstrate the terminal colon but uh, but uh, it is more useful for uh, defining the bony structure like presence of the sacrum as well as it can tell us about the musculature but there is a difficulty in differentiating between the meconium and the rectal wall and it also gives a radiation to the patients mri is to be better than ct scan because it easily differentiates between the meconium and the rectal wall and also it defines better uh, give, but gives a better picture about the pelvic musculature as well as about the tell us about the fistula location but this procedure needs a sedation for the patients at our center we follow only distal colostogram ct and mri are not done once we plan once we know that patient has a low arm we can directly go ahead with the definitive treatment with the enoplasty enoplasty can be either cut back enoplasty or viva enoplasty cut back enoplasty is a simple procedure where you uh, where you take a incision on the midline at the neonate site of the neonatal orifice and uh, the rectum is open and mucosa is suture to the skin 
but there is a high chance of stenosis in these patients if not done wide opening whereas vy enoplasty a v shaped skin flap is taken at the raised posteriorly with the apex at the posterior margin of the fistula and a vertical incision is taken on the posterior wall of the anal canal and the flap the skin flap is uh, advanced into the anal canal so that the wide opening can be made most of the patients with the high and intermediate arm can be treated with the posterior sagittal approach that is a pscrp pscrp or posterior sagittal can be various types like it depends upon the the your length of the incision and the depth of the dissection in a patient with the perineal fistula or perineal defects a minimal pscrp can be enough whereas in a patient with the high arm they require a full pscrp entire management of the arm changed after this article in 1982 where where uh, when alberto pinna published his uh, technique of posterior sagittal anorectoplasty which is completely based upon the exposure of the anorectal region with the midline incision from a sacrum to the anal dimple cutting all the muscles uh, behind the rectum he believed that the there are no nerves or blood sub, uh, or the blood vessels in the midline cutting the in the midline preserves the has a better outcome on the continence but he, his way of thinking about the anatomy uh, also described there is uh, also said that the puborectal sling has no, not much importance in the uh, in the anal continence pinna's concept was there is a funnel shaped funnel shaped Uh, muscle around the rectum that is levator ani and there are a parasagittal fibers running on the both side of the mid sagittal plane uh, that is the uh, mid sagittal plane hence the dissection when done completely in the midline you can expose the rectum well and as well you can open the fistula and ligate it better and once again the rectum can be placed exactly in the midline in between the muscles once you take the patient for psrp initially you have to catheterize the patient uh, with the foley's 80% of times the catheterization is successful 15 to 20% of chances is there when the your foley's bulb can enter into the rectum via the fistula then you have to guide the then we have to guide it with the help of the uh, help of the guide wire or you can do it intraoperatively while you are dissecting the fistula and place the catheter into the bladder pinna used uh, uh, used the muscle stimulator to stay perfectly in the midline here the picture shows uh, the incision mark from the sacrum the coccyx till the anal dimple and further extended till the scrotum once you incise in the midline you have to deepen the incision and uh, you have to uh, be in the midline and dissect dissect the muscles initially the parasagittal fibers then you will see the muscle complex divide the muscle complex deepen the incision until you see the levator ani you have to open the levator ani then you will see the fascia uh, behind the rectum that is once you dissect the posterior wall of the rectum your dissection will go circumferentially on both side lateral wall once the lateral wall dissection is done once you reach the anterior wall dissection there need to be a meticulous dissection here because the chances of urethral injury are always there when you feel you are the, there is a once you see the on the distal cologram whether the, what is the gap between the urethra and your rectal pouch you feel if it is very less gap then you can do a meticulous dissection you can open even the rectal pouch identify the fistula ligate it well then the submucous plane can be created between the rectum and the urethra the rectum can be mobilized uh, circumferentially and uh, so that the adequate pull through bowel is available once the rectum uh, brought till the anal opening then uh, the fascia as well as the muscles are closed and then enoplasty is done with the 16 sutures most of the patients are can be managed with the psrp alone whereas the prostatic fistula or the patient with the recto bladder neck fistula needs an abdomino perineal combined approach here you may have to open from above dissect between the rectum and the bladder ligate the fistula and then a bowel should be tapered and pull through can be done this can be even better done with the laparoscopically where you can ligate the fistula laparoscopically and the pull through can be done whereas patients with anterior ectopic anus not an ideal term anus anterior ectopic anus because there is not a normal one there is no proper anus with it neither it is in the sphincter so rectoperineal fistula is the ideal term 
where you need to do a minimal PSAP and a posterior and the lateral dissection. While doing anterior dissection, you should be careful as you can see as the picture shows here that the anterior wall is very near to the urethra. So chances of urethral injury are also there in a small procedure. And these patients are known to have a constipation postoperatively. Patients with imperforate anus without fistula are known to have good prognosis. They have 90% are even known to be associated with the Down syndrome. It is just a blind ending rectum at the bulbar urethra without any fistula. Even a primary PSARP has been successful in these patients. And when to do this procedure? It is said the early definitive procedure done at 2 to 3 months has a more advantage as it has a less time with the abdominal stoma less size discrepancy between the proximal and the distal bowel at the time of colostomy closure, earlier anal dilatation, avoidance of the psychological stress to the patient as well as even to the parents and also it has a very good local sensation. There are complications with every procedure even in this like wound dehiscence and a wound infection which, is, which can be there and can be avoided by keeping the patient in PO for 2-3 to three days. There are chances of the stomal uh, pull through bowel necrosis and the bowel retraction which can lead for a redo PSARP. Whereas a transient femoral nerve palsy has also been uh, reported in patients due to the positioning of the patients. There can be an inadvertent injury to the urethra, bladder, vas or there can be even an enocutaneous stenosis or a stitcher if your pull through bowel skin gets, uh, gets necrosed. The chances of anal stenosis if there is an inadequate dilatation, the functional uh, problems like chronic constipation, overflow incontinence are also known. If the fistula is not ligated properly or there have been over ligation, then there can be urethral stitcher or urethral dilatation. Sorry, diverticulum. The post operative management of these patients, what we follow is the police, uh, Foley's catheter is kept for around 5 days. Most of the surgeons prefer 5 to 7 days. But prophylactic IV antibiotics we give around 3 to 4 days and then oral antibiotics and the perianal wound care. Anal dilatation initially for once a day for 10 15 days to 1 month, then followed by once a week for a month and then once a week for 3 months. Colostomy closure we plan once it is adequate anal opening is present at roughly around 6 weeks to 8 weeks after the PSARP procedure. Once the colostomy closure is done, initially patients are known to have the multiple bowel movements and perineal excuration. We advise a constipating diet to, these, diet to these patients. The regular bowel habits take around 3 to 6 months of time in these patients. A patient who has 1 to 3 bowel movements a day remains clean and in between shows the evidence of feeling or pushing during the bowel movements are known to have a good bowel movement pattern and these can be trained well. There are few predictors for the prognosis as far as bowel control is concerned in these patients. It is better to prognosticate about them to the parents prior instead of, in, instead of all the stress they go through in the management of the bowel because of the incontinence later. There are some poor prognosis indicators like abnormal sacrum, flat perineum with the poor muscles and some types of anum rectal malformation like high type especially bladder neck fistula as well as complex malformations. There was a debate concerned whether the, the surgery can be done in a single stage and whether it is better compared to the multi-stage. Advantage of doing a single stage primary pull through early in the neonates is easier dissection due to the virgin tissue planes with no fibrosis due to pouchitis. There, need, there is no need for a bowel preparation as meconium is considered sterile. Colostomy is avoided as well as it avoids the physical and psychological stress to the parent, child as well as surgeon. The disadvantages are there is an increased risk of injury to the urinary tract, risk of dehiscence and infection and these procedures should be attempted only by the skilled surgeon who has done around 15 to 20 PSARPs before. The unskilled surgeon is, has a more chance of injuring unexpected, surgeries, uh, unexpected structures like posterior urethra, seminal vesicles, vas difference etc. Even our department has published uh, uh, the experience uh, about the, our study that is uh, 80 primary PSARPs du done during the neonatal age with when compared to the conventional three stage procedures which was outcome was measured to the Kelly scoring where we saw the good continence was achieved in a primary PSARP 45% of patients whereas 26% in the three stage conventional surgery. 
Few surgeons also prefer a laparoscopic assisted anorectoplasty than a PSARP. Their, their, uh, their concerns were that there is an excellent view of the peritoneal reflection, vast difference and ureta in case of laparoscopy. The fistula can be sutured or ligated with the endo loop and the advantages of this being there is a precise placement of the rectum without dividing the or weakening of the muscles and diminished scarring with the improved rectal compliance. Also, it is applicable for rectoprostatic and bladdernic fistulas. The, such an, uh, the one more study published from the uh, Coimbatore College where they have done 68 patients uh, who have undergone laparoscopic assisted anorectoplasty and the outcome was 71% they said was having a good continence. Scoring of, your, uh, of the surgeries or the outcome can be done with the uh, various scores have been uh, there in the literature. Most widely used was the Kelly scoring and the Hall-Schneider score which includes even the objective parameter that is electromanometry and also gives a detailed information regarding bowel habits. Crickenbeck outcome assessment score was one which came out after the uh, 2005 international conference for the development of the ARM management where the, these patient scoring should be done in more than three years of patients. 3 years age patients where they considered at the presence or absence of voluntary bowel movements, soiling and constipation. Now coming to the outcome of whatever surgeries you have done and the presence of the defects. In spite of doing your best work, the defects like a uh, simple defects like low RM and atresia and stenosis are known to have constipation even up to 70% whereas the patient with the patients with the high ARM like the bladder neck fistula or the prostatic fistula are known to have uh, fecal incontinence or soiling in about 70 to 90 percent of patients. However, these can be further reduced by bowel wash management. And finally, the outcome of total continent patients that is a voluntary bowel movements and no soiling at all. It can be done in atresia and stenosis around 50 percent of patients, perineal fistula 83 percent of patients but it is seen very less in prostatic fistula and bladder neck fistula that is just 18% to 7% of patients. These are my references for the part 1 and part 2 of ARM seminar. Thank you.